Good afternoon, here I am from my studio again. Um, thanks for joining me for my Facebook Live. So I'll be doing this every Wednesday at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and at uh, 7 p.m. Uh, UK time, sorry. Um, so first of all, I'd like to say I hope you are all healthy and well and that we get through this as quickly as we can. Um, I do think that artists have an advantage in being asked to stay at home um, because we are used to working on our own and being alone in our studios or our dining room or wherever we happen to make our art. And um, so I think you'll find actually that there are a lot of tips for working from home if you're lucky enough to be able to do that or even for just being at home and keeping yourself occupied. A lot of artists are creating tips that you can look at um, to make sure that you uh, can keep yourself busy and uh, stay away from too much uh, watching the TV news during these times. So uh, let's have a look. The first thing I thought I would do is show you some of the little cards that I've been creating um, while I'm in my studio here. So these are watercolour and pen and um, they're watercolour paper cards that, uh, that I bought. I've got a whole stack of them and I'm going to be sending them out to people. So if you want a chance to receive one of my cards, then you need to make sure that you uh, are on my mailing list, which you can easily do. You can join that from Facebook. You can send me an email, whatever you like. Um, if you're already on my mailing list, then you can have a look at my latest newsletter, which actually just you probably received about um, maybe 20 minutes ago. Um, and there should be an option to update your preferences, and that allows you to make sure that I have your physical mailing address. So have a look at that. So I'm going to be sending out these cards, and here are a few of them that I have uh, created over the last week. At the moment, you'll notice that I'm on a little bit of an elephant phase. So here we go. Um, here's another one. And another one. Oh, not an elephant. Maasai person there from, uh, from Tanzania. Another elephant. And another elephant. And another elephant. There we go. So this, you can see, is uh, watercolour. Uh, the washes in the background are watercolour. And then the elephant is in pen. Uh, and these are just little, I guess they're four by six. Four by six. Looks about right. Um, my trusty pens, the ones that I keep telling you about that are no longer being made. Um, anyway, there we go. So that's my watercolour cards that I am creating. Uh, I'm still creating my daily sketches and I need to post some of those for you as well. Uh, so what we're going to look at today though, what I'm going to look at, hopefully here, is a little bit more of the elephant that I worked on last time. So let me move that to the table here. So you can see a bit of that. So the um, 
The wash here is the one that I did last week during my Facebook Live session, if you saw that. And um, I think you can see, right, so the three colours that I were using, these are my golden uh, fluid acrylic paints here. Um, I was using cobalt blue, Naples yellow hue, and quinacridone magenta. And uh, the wash that I had here in the background is the one that I did. And you can really see now how these colours are starting, uh, have separated. And it makes a lovely wash, even though when I put them on the paper, they were actually all mixed together. So that's, um, that's the kind of reason why I love water media. Um, you'll probably hear me referring to watercolour all the time. It's just habit, even though these are officially acrylics, but I use them just like water colour. Um, so let's have a look. The one thing I did since I was last uh, on here live with you was to add more of this salmon colour, which was actually created with the Naples yellow and the magenta and a tiny, tiny touch of the cobalt blue. Um, I'm only using the three uh, colours during this painting. I often limit my paintings to just three um, colours when I'm... because uh, it means that whichever combination you use the painting looks very balanced, it looks very calm generally and uh, that's something I aim for with most of my work and um, it also brings the whole painting together because you can see the the colour we have here, it's, it's also visible in the wash um, and so I use those three colours in different combinations and different strengths throughout the painting. So the thing I'm going to look at now, yes, so I did, sorry, I did a little bit more wash here, just a tiny amount above the elephant so that I would highlight the elephant's outline. Uh, and then I put a little bit of that colour on the elephant as well but I didn't do anything to the rest of the piece. And I'm thinking that I'm going to probably crop this quite narrow. Let me show you. I find it's always useful to have a couple of uh, mats around just to, to have a look at your, uh, your work with uh, with an edge you know so you can see how it looks so that's what I'm thinking at the moment something like that but that might change you know um, it's one thing that is a very good idea is to make your canvas or paper larger than you want the final piece to be because you know I may decide once I've done this that uh, I want to crop it much uh, much more like this or more like this or more to the left more to the right um, or a totally different size um, so it's always good to have a bit of extra canvas to or paper to play with so i'm going to now um, mix some of my color Let's see, I think what I'll do, of course I don't normally do this, but just so that you can see what I'm doing and that I'm not ruining my, uh, ruining my painting as well, I'm going to mix my colour here. Magenta's nearly finished. <laughs> Need to get out another tube of that. Okay. Alright, now I normally just mix my colours with a 
brush like this. Okay, let's see. I'm going to have quite a bit of the yellow. Not the red, the magenta, sorry, is um, much stronger. We don't always need quite so much of it. Right, we're going to move that over here. Right, let's have a look. Now, before I put any more paint on, I'm actually going to add a little bit of colour with a couple of my pens here, just so that I keep control of the elephant. Um, again, it's a good idea to always check the colours down the edge of your canvas to um, or your paper to make sure you know. See, that this one looks very pale, but it actually comes out quite a bit darker. I don't want to go quite that dark. So I'm actually going to go with this, even though it's probably not very visible to you. Um, I'm just putting in a little bit of the elephant's spine here, so I can see where that is. This is the line of the tail here. That kind of comes in and goes down here. And I want to make sure I don't lose the tusk. I'm just going to put a little mark here and here. This is the this is the back leg here. Elephants have a very obvious knee on their back leg there. I'm just putting in a couple of marks here. Here's the other back leg. This is the line of the belly. And here is the front leg. And I'm not going to separate the ear from the front leg there. I'm just going to leave that as one piece because I don't want to draw attention to it. Um, so that's just given me a little bit of something to uh, to work with. Right, let's see. So now what I'm going to do is take this brush here. Um, I actually like working with the sort of the flat brushes. I like the lines that you can create with them like this. Uh, this is actually a half inch Cotman. And I'm going to take a little bit of the colour that I've mixed before. See it there. And I'm just going to add it. Let's see. We're going to have just a touch, you know, I kind of, I feel like there's too much white here on the elephant, so I'm going to, I need to think about this, right. It's difficult to paint and think at the same time, often. So I'm going to think about this, I'm going to go here and here. I'm leaving a gap, you see, between those brush strokes, I don't want everything to be completely covered. I'll just put that little piece there. It probably won't make any difference at all. And then I'm just going to use the edge of the brush here to outline. Elephants have, particularly the bulls, often have a very high spine. Okay. Right. 
lights. So, back here for a moment. I was actually teaching a class um, drawing elephants for my nephew the other day and uh, I looked up a couple of facts. I thought I could astound him with my knowledge. <laughs> and um, one of those facts which actually astounded me was that the longest elephant tusk recorded was 3.55 meters long. It's pretty horrendously huge. And uh, imagine carrying two of those around with you all day. Oh my God, that must have been a massive, massive elephant. Um, yes, so anyway, that was my elephant class. Yesterday uh, was a lion class. Um, I did play some lion roaring tape, which I took in the Kalahari, so um, they could hear he could hear the sound of the lions. So next week apparently is zebra, so I have to come up with lots of interesting facts about zebra. Uh, like for example, did you know that a zebra's skin is black and its markings are white? There you go. Um, yeah, interesting fact about zebra. Uh, they always look healthy because they're full of air. Uh, what else? I, I know I've got lots of interesting facts about zebras. Uh, maybe I'll, or even zebra. Actually, I should get some facts about zebra as well. <laughs> Sorry, that's just for all the Americans out there. Um, okay, let's go back to the painting. By the way, I'm sorry. If I'm not answering comments at the moment, I will answer them later. Um, thank you for watching. This is just a piece of me live in my studio. And uh, I am just showing you the way I work on uh, in the studio on various things. And uh, hopefully you're enjoying this and I will get to your comments later, but it's just me here. I don't have a studio assistant to read your comments to me while I'm working. So I'm thinking now, I'm going to go back to this mat again, just very roughly what I was thinking of doing, and have a look at this and see, right, what, what am I going to do next? You know, a lot of what I do in my studio is stand here and talk to myself and say, what am I going to do next? Um, so welcome to a normal day in my studio. Right, let's see. I want to, obviously I want to draw your eye to the elephant, but there needs to be more down here. I need more vegetation. Um, I'm probably not going to put another wash of colour there, but uh, Let's see, I'm kind of thinking down here. Right, I'm going to take the mat off while I paint. I'm going to use, again, another one of my, this is a one and a half inch um, flat wash brush, which you can see, let's just stick that in some water. You know, you can see it comes to a pretty fine line there if you can see that so you can get some really fine lines with this even though it's a big brush and that's what I'm going to attempt to do now but first we're going to put this just down here because that top piece is still drying and I'm going to add Sorry, just bump the microphone there. I'm going to add a bit of uh, blue. Hopefully you can see this. Yeah, I think you can. Uh, a bit of blue to my wash. There you go. 
Okay. Bit more yellow. Bit more blue. Let's see now. Let's see if we can get this. Uh, move this over here like this. We're going to have a little look. That looks very grey. So I'm going to go with a bit more of the magenta to turn it a little bit pinker. Yeah, that's better. A bit pinker. Right. Now, let's see if you can hear any nice noises in the background. That's my husband. He'll blame the dog and say it's the dog, but it isn't. It's my husband. Ah, oh, the joys of working from home. Okay. I have now got my paint ready to go. Remember I had the mat about here, about here. So I'm just going to plunge into it here with my brush. I'm going to draw some lines. We're going to have some things like this. I'm going to make sure that I take a bit of extra colour there and mix, you know, make it a bit yellower here, a bit more magenta over there. You see, there's the uh, there's the yellow, and again, go down bef go down lower than you think you need it to. And I'm not worrying about every single piece um, fitting correctly into the um, the vegetation. And now I'm going to take a piece that is slightly bluer. And I'm going to go out here like this. See, I've got a bit too much water on the brush, so I want to actually cover the edges just a little bit. Alright, decisions, decisions. to cross each other. I want it to look you know, complex like a, like a tree would. And I don't worry, I don't worry if pieces like this here where it's a bit thicker there and a bit thinner here. The point is I want it to quickly. I'm going to take that off because the question is do I want this to go above the elephant or not? So I'm going to grab one mat like this and I think I'm not going to I'm not going to go above the elephant at the moment. I'm going to start another one coming in from the side over here. I'm going to make it thicker. Crossing over. This one, I'm going to have a bit higher, you see. Mm. 
going to be a bit darker and this can actually come right over here. You'll notice that I'm painting the tree in the direction of growth. So I'm starting low down and working my way up. That's always a good idea. Um, with trees, with grass, you know, you start at the bottom. Generally, you know, there's always times when you're going to break that rule. Um, I just want to show you what has happened to my palette here. Because you see how even when I dip my take water off my brush, you can see how these colours are separating, it's beautiful. Right, we're gonna have a look at uh, this with my dog slumped down outside in case you're wondering. Have a look at this with the mat over it just to see what else I might want to do. And I think that four, let's turn that back around. I'm going to call a halt to today's session. Um, now that you can see where I've got to so far, uh, I'll probably add a few more of these uh, pieces of vegetation into the foreground. And, uh, and then I hope that you will join me again next Wednesday at the same time, two o'clock Eastern Standard and seven o'clock, 7 p.m. Uh, UK time and um, I will be in the meantime doing a little bit more work on this and I'll be creating more of these cards so once again I'm going to start sending these original water Ooh, slipped off my table there very cool I like to appear cool on Facebook um, these cards that I've been creating, they're on uh, watercolour paper, they're all originals. And if you would like to be in line to receive one, I'm sending them out to a few people who are on my mailing list at random. Uh, and so you can join my mailing list from any of my social media platforms. And you can uh, make sure that you give me your mailing address and maybe you will get a card as well so as i said at the beginning stay healthy stay positive stay put and i'll see you next week all right bye